Okay, so we're looking at we're still looking at gas reduction at determinants, looking at calculating determinants by gas reduction. And we are now going to do some examples of doing that. So we've done all this. We're now we've done all these the theorems and stuff. About how the determinant changes when you use gas reduction. Now we're here. Evaluate the determinant of two two one four six two six five seven. Okay. So you start off by scaling row one. So you divide row one by a half, and that means that the determinants will also be divided by a half. So you need times it by two to keep it equal. You can also think of it. I always think of it as pull out two from 2, 4, 6, from row 1. Pull out 2 from row 1, and you have 1, 2, 3 left as row 1, okay? Then 0 the enters under the pivot. So we're going to go row 2 should become row 2 minus 2 times row 1. So then we have 0, 2, 5 minus 6 minus 1, yes. And row 3 should become row 3 minus row 1. So then we have 0, 0, and 7 minus 3 is 4, yes. Okay. Now, what's left over is an upper triangular matrix. So, to get the term to that, you just multiply the things on the diagonal. 1 times 2 times 4 is 8, so the whole determinant becomes 2 times 8 is 16. Okay. Now, we have show that this determinant of this 4 by 4 is equal to minus 200. Okay. So, you can either expand directly or you can just do some gas reduction first. I strongly suggest that if you have any doubts about how useful gas reduction is for these types of problems, you try and expand it directly. Then it says if you do need to, you do it by gas, if you do it by gas reducing, you don't need to reduce it all the way to row echelon form, although you can. Even a single step will make it much easier to evaluate the determinant. Okay, so let's evaluate this. Well, try it yourself first, please. But then, once you've done that, come back to this video and see if you agree with me, or if you do it the same way or a different way. But we, in any way, you should get the same thing, minus 200. Okay, so we could start off by doing, we could start off with row two, plus 5 times row 1, row 3 becoming row 3 minus row 1, and row 4 becoming row 4 minus row 1. And then we'll have the determinant of 1 minus 1 minus 2 minus 3 as the first row. The second row would be 0. Okay, so now we have, so we have minus 5 plus 5 is 0. Then we have 1 minus 5, which is minus 4. And then we have 2 minus 10, which is minus 8, and 4 minus 15, which is minus 11. Then third row, we have 0 minus 1 plus 1, which is 0. 6 plus 4, which is 10. Um, 1 plus 3, which is 4. Sorry, wait. Why am I times things by two? No. Sorry. We have six plus two, which is eight. We have one plus three, which is four. Yes. Uh, then the fourth row, we have one minus one is zero. Minus two plus one is minus one. Three. Let me go and close the door for the washing machine. Okay, sorry. Uh, we have row 4 minus row 1, so we have um, 0, and then we have minus 1 plus 2 is... Hey. No, we have minus 2 plus 1, which is minus 1. Then we have 3 plus 2, which is 5, and then we have 4 plus 3, which is 7. Now we can... And those... That's... These two things are equal, because those are... Uh, those steps... Adding a scalar multiple of one row to another doesn't change the determinant. So now we could expand down the first column, right? We get that this thing is, that's an even entry there, so a determinant of minus 4, oh, sorry, minus 4, 0, minus 1, minus 8, 8, 5, minus 11, 4, 7. Okay. Now we could do, we could do, take row 1 and we could no I don't want to do that ok 
Okay, let's do, yeah, let's take row 1 and subtract 4 times row 3 from row 1. That won't change the determinant, but we will end up with row 1 becoming 0. Okay, then minus 8 minus 20, which is minus 28, and minus 11 minus 28, which is minus 39. Okay, and then we have 0, 8, 4. Oh, actually, you know, I should pull out... No, there's no point. We have 0, 8, 4, and then we have minus 1, 5, 7. Okay, now I can expand down the first column. And again, that minus 1 is an even entry, because it's row 3, column 1. So it's just you just have a minus 1 times by the terms of what remains, which is, in this case, minus 28, 8, minus 39, 4. Okay, but actually, at the same time, let me pull out, let me pull out a, um, a four from that second row. So the second row becomes two, one. Okay. Now I could do row one should become can become row one plus fourteen times row two. Okay, and then we're going to have minus four. 0, so we have minus 39 plus 14, which is 25, and then you still have the 2, 1 there. Okay. It's not 25, it's still going gonna, gonna to be minus 25, sorry. Okay. Now we calculate the... Now the determinant of this is easy to calculate because it's just got one term in it, so it's going to be the of minus 4 times by minus minus 50, so now it's by 50, so we get minus 200. Okay, so that's it. Use Hattach's determinants with Gauss reduction to help you. And I think I'll leave this video there.